it's interesting, uh, as a young person I never thought I'd have any influence on anyone. I was absolutely hopeless at school, but, uh, and I'm going to be talking later in a later section about prosperity without growth, which is something I haven't really thought about. No one's benefited more from growth than I have. But what I'm going to talk about now is how incredible change is possible, because that's what you're here for. And it's amazing what change can take place. I grew up in the time of the Cold War. You heard it mentioned just the second last speaker. The Cuban Missile Crisis, when we used to see on television photos of mushroom clouds and Russia was the enemy. And uh, there was no hint that it would ever change. I was hopeless at school, so I got a job in a factory. And I remember this little song that used to wail away all the time. Let's see if I can play it. by Tony Fisher and it was the song about west of the Berlin Wall because the Soviet Union was behind the Iron Curtain and can you imagine the government, the communist government in Germany had to build a wall to stop people from getting out. I was fascinated with that so as a 22 year old I managed to get into Russia and I came out through the Berlin Wall from the opposite way. I remember how thinking how incredibly unfair it was, I had a passport and a visa I was just a young backpacker and I managed to go through the wall coming from the communist side into the western side. But I knew that people of my age were being killed and were shot, murdered because they wanted freedom. And then when I was 39 years of age, I'd made some money out of Dick Smith Electronics and I decided to fly solo around the world in a helicopter. But I couldn't get approval to fly in Russia at all. And uh, in the end, I had to come up with uh, the idea of landing on a ship between Japan and Alaska, because you can't fly around the world in a helicopter unless you go through Russia normally. And I remember thinking, look, surely oh, there's no way I'd be shot down if I flew in the Russian airspace. And three months after my flight, a Korean jumbo jet, a DC-10, was shot down by the Russians and had made a mistake with navigation in the same area, and hundreds of people died. So you can see how serious it was, this huge difference between communism and the West. Six years later, I managed to get approval. It was right at the time of what we call perestroika and glasnost, where I was going to fly vertically around the world, and the only way you can do that, I was going to go from Tasmania to the South Pole, and then up through the Americas to the North Pole, and then down through Russia. And it was right at the time when Glasnost and Perestroika, the, the whole system seemed to be breaking down and I managed to get this approval. And I remember seeing signs in some of the towns in Siberia which had a handshake and a US flag and a Russian flag, a Soviet flag in those days. And I asked someone to explain it to me and they said, oh, that's friendship. We're looking for friendship with the West. And a couple of years later, the Berlin Wall came down. Just amazing. Can anyone remember that happening? Is that, are you too young for the Berlin Wall coming down? It was about, I don't know how many years ago it was. And so what it showed me was that you can change great ideologies. The ideology of communism, which when I went there in 1966, everyone thought it would work. They thought this was the best system in the world. Unfortunately, it didn't work. Now, we have an ideology which is just as bad, just as dated, and it's this one of perpetual growth. Our economic system is based on the perpetual growth in the use of resources and energy, and I'll be talking about that a bit later. But what I find interesting, if I went to the treasurer and tried to sell him a perpetual motion machine, he wouldn't buy it. They simply don't exist. But he's overseeing, as most business people are, an economic system which is based on the perpetual growth in the use of resources and energy which, of course, anyone with any brains knows is not sustainable. Now, it's interesting. I'm going to give you a positive message today because you're going to succeed. You're going to be incredibly successful. Just as the Soviet ideology, which was against freedom, collapsed because it was not sustainable in the long term, 
the particular economic system we have now is not sustainable. I think we can have one still based on capitalism, because I'm a proud capitalist and I've benefited greatly, but one that is not addicted to this perpetual growth in the use of resources and energy. What's exciting to me, if you looked at the science and it was impossible to move away from fossil fuels because of the basic science, mainly the second law of thermodynamics, you'd say, well, we're doomed. But most people would know here that we get something like 5,000 times the energy from the sun than we use today in our world at our current wasteful sense. I worked out that you only need 100 kilometres by 100 kilometres of 12% efficient solar cells, that's the lousy efficiency ones, the cheap ones that we put on people's houses, to power the whole of Australia. Of course, there's a catch at the moment. We haven't yet developed a good way of storing energy, but that will come. Now, it's interesting about climate change because I was about to despair. I'm, a business, I'm an unusual businessman because I think it's most likely that humans are affecting climate. As you know, scientists say they're 90% sure. And I thought we're never going to get a decision out of our present politicians because will people actually sacrifice now for a future generation? I see our situation now very similar to... Great Britain just before the Second World War, where people were saying, if we don't contain Hitler, if we don't hold him to treaties, that we're going to have a catastrophe. And most of the business community said, as they do about climate change, well, how do we know? How do we know for sure something's going to go wrong? That one mistake, that one mistake cost 60 million lives and the most terrible despair for a generation of people, the most terrible time. There were people, uh, Churchill was one of them, who was saying we have to do something about this and he was proved to be right. Well, there are people like you who say we have to do something about climate change. As I mentioned, 100 kilometres by 100 kilometres. I'm, I'm not an enthusiast about wind power because I reckon it looks pretty terrible on the landscape. But to know that we could do it with solar cells, there'd be more of them, it would cost a bit more, that could power the whole of our, our Australia at our present wasteful sense so we all know that we can make great efficiency. Gains. Now, we have to decide, are we going to be like locusts? Locusts are creatures of nature, but their form of living is to build up in billions and then die of starvation in billions. Or could we, I dare say, be like the beautiful wildlife we see in this country? I happen to love the major Mitchell cockatoos, or the common pink and grey galah. They've lived in harmony in numbers for millions of years because they've got some brains. We heard our Aboriginal landowner saying that the Aboriginal people have been here for 40,000 years. They were here for 40,000 years because they lived here sustainably. Modern Western man has been in this country for 230 years and there's no way at the present rate of unsustainable use of resources we could last another 200 years. So you are the future. It was mentioned before the Wilberforce Award. The Wilberforce Award actually is quite tough to get. It's going to be awarded a bit like the Nobel Peace Prize. You have to become famous in the world in communicating that we can't always have growth. William Wilberforce, who it's named after, who was mentioned before, was a young person who said we have to operate without slavery. And the business community at the time said, just as they've said about growth now, that's impossible. Capitalism will collapse without slavery. The slaves will die, they'll starve. Of course, that didn't happen. The abolishment of slavery introduced the Industrial Revolution. And uh, the, the, in most cases, in most people have been able to lift at least their material standard of living since then. And we don't have slavery at that scale. So I'm looking for the young William Wilberforce, person could be here in this audience, who becomes a rat bag. You'll have to become a rat bag because the whole of our community, the Murdoch press, the, Mur the, the all of business and public companies are all built on this perpetual growth. And you'll have to say, you people of Dick Smith's age, including Dick Smith, you have let us down. You've got us living in an economic system which is not sustainable. You watch the ABC at night. I mean, they're supposed to be a lefty organisation, but when it comes to growth, Alan Cole has spruced growth the whole time. No one's really game to say that we can have a system. By the way, I can still see growth. Growth in quality of life and growth in 
efficiencies and growth in removing waste, just not in using more and more resources. So what I'm going to say is, be idealistic. Those young people who you saw pulling down the Berlin Wall were idealistic. And as a kid, I never thought the Cold War would change. I was told that will never change. It did because young people were idealistic. They looked at the future. That's what I suggest you do. Thanks for listening to me.